The moon hangs over the ocean with an ethereal glow. Underwater, a calmness falls on the reef, and creatures settle down for their slumber. Though some are too preoccupied to rest so quickly. Along the seabed, a black cap drawfish is so fixated on his parental duty that he holds his brood tightly in his mouth. An overprotectiveness almost bordering on the possessive. Despite the odd appearance, these eggs are safe and they shimmer like coins in an open treasure chest. Every so often, these coins are shuffled around, flushed with oxygen-rich water to keep them well aerated. Jawfish live in sand burrows, lying in wait for small prey. But with a mouthful of eggs, this parent stops feeding. He will starve for as long as it takes his brood to hatch, usually around a week. And once it does, he lets his treasure go, then quickly returns to a life in recovery. In the underwater world, parenting is a low priority. Among the fish families, only a third takes on the responsibility. The others are driven purely by their urge to spawn. By the coral reefs, these snappers gather in large spawning schools. They dance in collected synchrony. Until their excitement bubbles over. Males chase females and in a quick burst of passion, sperm and eggs are released into the waters. They dance again and again, and once the fish grow weary, the school finally scatters. These fish abandon their eggs after fertilization, leaving their survival purely down to chance. But with millions of eggs fertilized, the numbers lean in their favor, so enough will survive to maintain the next generation. For other fish, chance is often too unreliable. Instead, they provide care for a smaller number of eggs, investing in the future survival of their young. In these fish, parenting comes in many forms. Mouth brooding has evolved in nine different lineages, including jawfish, cardinal fish, and cichlids. The behavior is diverse across the families, and yet it swam the same evolutionary journey. Underwater, perhaps the simplest form of care is substrate guarding. On the sea floor, a titan triggerfish prepares her nest digging a hole in the sand for her eggs. After spawning, she will defend her nest from intruders much bigger than herself. These fish live by their name, triggered into aggression by even the slightest of threats. Many guarding species lack the same size and strength, so when too large a threat presents itself, all they can do is flee. In environments with high predation or poor conditions, 
an ancient guarding species may have needed to move eggs by mouth from one nest to another. Species most likely to learn this are those that feed by sifting through the substrate, already familiar with picking up objects. They also tend to have larger mouths. If local conditions in the environment kept changing over time, the ancestor may have needed to hold eggs for longer until it could find a more suitable home. Eventually, substrate guarding evolves into mouth brooding. The behavior frees parents from being restricted to a nesting site while providing protection for eggs, but still it carries a burden. On the rocky reefs, this coral cardinal fish can hardly hold his brood. The mouth can only fit so many eggs, and once it reaches capacity, parenting takes its toll. With a blocked mouth, breathing is difficult and can pose a serious problem, especially in environments with low oxygen. Some fish even end up spitting out their eggs. Feeding also becomes impossible. Mouth brooders starve as they incubate their eggs. Some species go in without food for several weeks. Over the course of incubation, this ring-tailed cardinal fish will truly bear the brunt of parental care. But starving isn't always the only option. Many fish resort to cannibalism. They'll consume their own eggs to make up for the cost of parenting. And when there are plenty of females around, they'll even cannibalize their entire brood as a resource towards caring for the next one. In the Great Lakes of Africa, the cichlids have evolved through explosive radiation, with over a thousand different species. Those in Lake Malawi and Lake Victoria came from mouth brooding ancestors. For many, the males fertilize eggs only once they're inside the female's mouth, guaranteeing their paternity. But some take parenting one step further. This female will continue to protect her young even after they've hatched, sheltering them in her mouth for just a few more weeks. Occasionally, she releases them so they can feed, and at the slightest threat, she signals them back to safety. This prolonged form of mouth brooding has evolved under high predation to increase juvenile survival. In the cichlid family, the behavior has evolved independently at least 14 times. For some species, both parents care for young, but biparental care has evolved into female-only care at least 30 times typically occurring after changes in the population's sex ratio. Since temperature determines sex in many fish, climate change can lead to more females than males in a population. With higher mating opportunities, males leave their partners to sire more young. Climate change can also lead to a lack of food so females lay smaller clutches, reducing the need for shared care and favoring uniparental care. All cichlids in Lake Victoria and all except one in Lake Malawi are maternal mouth brooders. In the murky waters, this single mother 
takes on the mantle from a long line of mouth brooders before her. Despite the great cost, she too will persevere as parent, ensuring her young survives to carry on the family legacy.